things to the Messe Center in Herning, Denmark. It's time to see WBA super middleweight champ Mikkel Kessler put his title on the line against Guzmir Perdomo. Well, Kessler is an 11 year pro in the second reign as WBA champ. Only lost to Joe Calzaghi. He's coming in off an 11 month layoff. Wants to shake the ring rust off. Well, he's a, he's a beautiful fighter to watch out. Beautiful jab, left right, power, aggressiveness. He's got a great chin, and he's used to fighting southpaws. Perdomo, who is a southpaw, um, gets his chance late in his career to fight for the title. He too is coming in off an 11 month layoff. Yeah, and it's a big jump up in class for Perdomo. He's a he, he can be troublesome out because he's sort of a loosey goosey lanky lefty really a spoiler and uh, he's going to have to land that left hand tonight to be effective. Tailored tape what does it reveal. Well Perdomo you see is fairly tall for a super middleweight but there's no real reach advantage for him. In fact the numbers here you see are virtually the same. The difference really is in the quality of opposition. And for the rules one very different rule there is a three knockdown rule in effect for this fight. So we're just about ready to go for our 168 pound world championship match. Here's how Steve Antonio and I called the fight a little bit earlier. So Michael Kessler will defend his WBA title for the second time in this go around against Guzmir Perdomo. Of course, it's his first fight in 11 months for Kessler and a 10 month layoff for Perdomo. So these early rounds will be important to these fighters. And now a, a simplistic analysis to start here. Will Kessler, the right handed fighter, land his right hand, his power shot, more often than Perdomo, the southpaw, lands his left? That, that's a pretty simple analysis and a key to this fight. And Perdomo has scored most of his knockdowns as a fighter even though he's not a monstrous puncher uh, with that left hand. So that's the weapon of choice for him uh, even though he only has 12 KOs in his 18 wins. Kessler felt he was going to have to make this fight and early on uh, he seems like he is pushing forward though, although Perdomo is not really using all of this ring. No he's not uh, but he, he has a little herky jerky style about him that could uh, give Mikel some problem but I don't think it. Uh, It'll last long, but uh, once Kessler gets that jab working, uh, he'll be able to uh, utilize all of his skill tonight. Good right hook there by Perdomo, and he's been busy early in this round, working the body as well. And you see the experience. Look at the rounds. Perdomo's making a huge jump up in class, and, and even though he's older than Kessler, nowhere near Mikel Kessler in terms of experience. Perdomo celebrated his 33rd birthday on Monday. Hopes that he can make it a very special birthday. And he's been active here in round one as Kessler tries to establish the jab. And there's the left hand for Perdomo. I think this is a good start for Perdomo. I mean, he's on the road. You know, he's fought in Germany before, but this is nonetheless a very daunting position to be in for a fighter who hasn't fought at this level and he's been more aggressive than I would have guessed. Yeah that's a very good point. He said he was going to fight a tactical fight and win by intelligence but he's been pretty aggressive and, and a little redness around the left uh, cheekbone area of, of uh, Michael Kessler and Kessler picking up the pace here but not landing as effectively as he might as we head toward a half minute left to go in round number one. Scheduled for 12, the WBA champion, super middleweight championship of Nickel Kessler on the line. I like what I see in Perdomo because uh, he don't show any fear. You know, he's not intimidated that he's a long way from home. Uh, he's here to make, uh, you know, give himself the best chance to win here, and I like what I see. Did not come to survive, came to fight and try and win this championship. So round one, an interesting and spirited affair, and a big right hand by Kessler punctuates it. Perdomo with that right hook that was his best punch of the fight and it came in combination but toward the end of the round Kessler rallied big time with four or five good shots as if it's as if he was slowly zeroing in with that right hand which is his big weapon. Yeah. 
Kessler unloading his own hook as well toward the end of the round. Keep the jab going. When you want to fight him, get to the middle, like I told you, but don't back up. Got a back up. Looks like Perdomo got rocked a little bit there. He's right at the end of the round. We're heading into round number two now. In addition to Richard Olsen in the corner of uh, Kessler, that was the voice of Jimmy Montoya, a long time well known boxing figure here in the United States. Nickel Kessler defending his WBA title. He's in the white and red trunks in the black. It's Guzmir Perdomo, the 33 year old from Venezuela. And there's that Kessler jab that people talk about so much. That jab is almost like a punch. The way he snaps <laughs> it, it is so much velocity on it. Like uh, a hard right hand to get hit with, huh? Most definitely. And I guess when you when your jab is your best punch, Antonio, when you're a southpaw, you can land it against the left-hander. Most definitely. And there is Kessler concentrating on getting that punch in. Remember, at the end of round two, uh, the 30-year-old Kessler landed some big shots, left hooks and straight right hands. But Perdomo continues to be aggressive. Is he making a mistake by fighting in the pocket with Kessler and not uh, fighting a more tactical fight. No, I, I like his game plan. His game plan is, in, is going there and put some leather on Kessler. Let him know that the last thing this fight is is a tune-up. I, I agree, Al. I mean, you know, in his position, you're either coming here to win or you're not. And he's in a very tough position fighting in Denmark. The odds of him winning a decision unless he dominates are not very good. So go for it. You know, if you get knocked out by a right hand, you get knocked out. But at least he's trying to win so far. And he just landed a very nice straight left hand. And Kessler comes back with his own right. Both men looking pretty sharp for each man having a long layoff. Kessler, an 11-month layoff. And Perdomo, the Venezuelan, a 10-month layoff. Kessler uh, trained for this fight at the Max Schmeling Gym in Germany, where Carl Arthur Abraham, another Super 6 World Boxing Classic participant also trains, but uh, he's careful to point out they didn't watch each other train very much. Right now, his attention is on Perdomo, who is making this a very interesting match. Not a lot on Perdomo's punches, but he's been fairly busy. He eats two punches there. But he's accurate. He's been fairly accurate with the left hand, Perdomo. Just not a lot of starch on those shots. And Guzmir Perdomo is responsible for this being an action fight because he has engaged Kessler. Yes, he has. But Kessler was had, had a lot of success with the jab early in the in the second round. Not so much in the yeah. midway midway through. Got away from it a little bit as we move on here in round two. Overhand left by Perdomo as he mixes it up. He's been throwing that punch straight, and there's some body work by Perdomo as we head toward the end of round number two. The big surprise so far may be the right hook of Perdomo, which has been landing, and there's more body work. So, Guzmir Perdomo making a statement here in round two. He might have won that round, guys. His action from round two, Kessler does get the jab working. By far his best punch. Michael Tim is the trainer in uh, Perdomo's corner. He is, uh, this is his first fight with Perdomo. And Perdomo, on occasion, does tend to throw long shots. Look how much more compact Kessler's answer with the right hand is. We head into round number three. Richard Olsen was the older gentleman in the corner of Kessler. He's been his trainer from the beginning, and uh, Kessler sees him as literally a second father figure. We're into round number three. Nickel Kessler, 30-year-old from Denmark. Defending his WBA title against Guzmir Perdomo, the Venezuelan 33 year old who came in with an 18 and 2 record and 12 KOs, but has never fought the likes of Kessler. And very interesting the attacks of both fighters because Perdomo's gone to the body pretty steadily from the start. I've seen one body punch from Kessler in two rounds. It's really a good point. And, and Perdomo throwing combinations to the body as well. 
Yes, there's, he is. There's Kessler with a straight right hand after a jab, and again, Kessler gets more aggressive here in round three as he started out round two. But Como, uh, Perdomo is not running, and I'm, I'm glad to see that. He's really trying to make this fight. He's standing in close. He's giving Kessler all the opportunities in the world. And, you know, Antonio, when you, when you come back after a long layoff, how long does it a, in a fight sometimes take you to get your legs under you where you are confident about what you're doing? Well, it depends on how your camp went. You know, uh, these guys are, uh, 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 were preparing for such a big fight, the WB, the championship, WA championship. So uh, I don't think the layoff did them any uh, harm, as you can tell. I mean, both yeah, of they, them look good. They really don't look that rusty. <laughs> both men landing. We're at the halfway mark here in round number three. I'm Al Bernstein along with Steve Farhood and Antonio Tarver. We bring you this WBA championship fight on the eve of our Super Six World Boxing Classic with the Super Middleweights. There's a left hand that strays low by Perdomo, and he will get a, a warning by Russell Mora. Kessler going to town and pins Perdomo on the ropes. And there's the jab of Kessler and the right hand. One thing that's clear out, Kessler is the much harder puncher. That you could see. His punches have had more impact. There's no question about that. And we know him to be a hard puncher in this weight division. 31 KOs in his 41 wins. Good body shot. Finally, Kessler goes downstairs. As Steve pointed out, not much of that from him. Under a minute left to go here in round number three. And it's been a good round, by and large, for Mikkel Kessler. He's been busier in round three than he was in rounds one or two, and it's helped him. You know, the styles of these guys, as they approach each other, it's almost a cultural difference in boxing. Wow, a right hand sends Perdomo down. It looked like it landed on the shoulder, though. I don't know if that landed on the chin at all. It may not have hurt him, but clearly the force of the punch knocked him down, and so it appears to appropriately have been called a knockdown. So with seconds remaining here in round three, Michael Kessler gets a big advantage. And they love it here. They love it in Denmark where this crowd came to see Michael Kessler defend his title. They'll be speaking several different languages in that corner as we take a look back and see how Kessler did it. Oh boy, Antonio Tarver called that on yes. the button. That was on the left shoulder, no doubt about it. Good call, Antonio. But it was definitely the force of the punch. Yeah. And it's a legal knockdown. Gloves touch. 10-8 round. Yeah, interesting. And of course, Kessler has been doing well in that round in any case. And, and what, the point I was making, that upper body movement is a very Hispanic, Latin kind of way to fight. Kessler more European in that he stands straight up. And that upper body movement may actually have led to the knockdown because Perdomo was a little off balance. Good point. We're in round four. Nickel Kessler, who scored a knockdown in round three, as you saw, against Guzmir Perdomo, who wasn't hurt by it, but still now realizes that maybe that created a hole for him here early in this bout. Guzmir Perdomo, best chances to survive this fight or even make himself look good in this fight, is right in the middle of the ring. If he goes and puts his back on the rope, Mikhail Kessler, it seems like he smelled blood, and, and if he stays there, the end is near. More body work by Perdomo. And the 33-year-old Venezuelan, who has never been down before go. this fight, but now he's hurt. It's over. Amazing, a sudden ending like that in a fight that was competitive. He had been knocked down for the first time in his career in round three, and then all of a sudden, Michael Kessler turned on the power and shockingly ended it. And I think we saw why Michael Kessler is in the Super Six. Yes, yes. And you know what's, to me, gentlemen, what's intriguing about this match is that Clearly, Perdomo fought well for him, yes, came in to try and make it a fight. Kessler needed several rounds to get his rhythm and his timing, and once he did, power. There were a couple of right hands there. My first impression I was, as I was watching 
perhaps a little bit of a quick stoppage, but the, it, Perdomo clearly was hurt. He was definitely hurt. Uh, he was there on the ropes, and, and you can tell that his legs was uh, leaving him. Uh, you know, why allow the fighter to take two or three more hard shots from Kessler when, you know, the end was, you know, the writing was on the wall. And perhaps the key is, as Kessler justifiably celebrates his victory, the key perhaps was that Perdomo did not really complain, nor did his corner. And so this young man, though he fought well in spots during the first three and a half rounds, just could not get it going, although maybe the way he's shaking his head, some signs that he didn't agree with the stoppage, but no complaint right at the time. And uh, Nickel Kessler gets the job done and makes the second defense of his WBA title and sets himself up for entrance into the Super Six World Boxing Classic. And we'll see how he did it right here. Well, the jab set up the right hand. That's why you jab first. Perdomo stumbled there, and right now he's virtually he's out bad. on his feet. He's yeah. hurt bad. And, and better yet, Kessler knows it. And these punches are around his head missing. Russell Mora ready to step in. I think it was a little quick myself. I agree. I agree. A little I, quick. I think he could have given Perdomo in a championship match maybe a, a few more seconds to, you know, he could have thought about it for a second or two. But... Yeah, I mean, the, the right hand that led to Perdomo backing to the ropes, it was really the only solid punch. Well, it's and one, it, was, it was a crippling punch. Yeah, but and there, there's one more, a second more, right. Yeah. But, and that's when Amora stepped in and thought perhaps there was a problem. Now, watch him now. Perdomo is yeah. out. The referee is almost holding him up. <laughs> so he fell after, you know, uh, Kessler backed off of him. So, you know, I don't know if it was, I wouldn't say it was a quick stoppage, but he was definitely out. And, uh, you know, the best fighter won tonight. And probably Kessler would have taken him out shortly after that. So yes, exactly. They had no argument there. Yeah. Uh, but um, in any case, Mikkel Kessler with his 40 second win as a professional and does it in dramatic fashion against Guzmir Perdomo. And what you see is we look at the replay again. Clearly the jab blinded Perdomo. Perdomo had never been down before this fight. And the irony is that he went down at the end of round three. It wasn't really a knockdown. I mean, he got, yeah, it was a knockdown technically, but yeah. he got clipped on the shoulder right, and he shoulder. lost his balance. That really didn't lead you to believe that we would see what we saw in round four. Ladies and gentlemen, we have time of 56 seconds in round number four. Winner by the way of knockout and steal. Back here with Steve Farhood and Steve as we look at that fight the question I guess is did Kessler accomplish what he wanted to going into this tournament. Al I don't think he could have done it any better. It took him four rounds to solve the Perdomo puzzle. He did it that got rid of the ring rust. He emerged unscathed yeah. maybe the most important thing of all and important to him he kept the WBA title. So he's going into the tournament not only as the favorite but with tons of momentum now as well. Okay, that's for sure. Now, uh, Antonio, as we spin forward on this fight and we think of Kessler against Ward, how does it set up to you uh, in terms of what you saw from Kessler? Well, Kessler definitely had a, a very impressive performance tonight. He showed his speed, showed his boxing ability, and in the end, he showed his knockout power. I'm anxious to see what Ward we're going to see tonight. Just to get more excited about, Oct I'm sorry, November 21st, when they uh, compete in the first half of the Big Six. So uh, I can't wait. We're looking forward to it now. Mikhail Kessler uh, looked back on this victory and also looked ahead. Uh, I didn't put him down in the third. I think I only hit him in the shoulder, so it was all right. But I finished him in the in the fourth, and uh, it was uh, it was a good fight. He, he he came strong in the first couple of rounds. I couldn't figure him out, so uh, I made a play in the third round. I had to go forward and and, and put pressure on him, and that worked. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to the Super Six. It's a dream come true for us all. And Andrew Ward is uh, he's a great fighter. Deep, deep respect for him. He's a tough guy and a, and a nice guy. I met him also. So I think we're going to have a hard fight. I'm going to show him my, I'm the best. I'm the world champ. 